The local tribes around the Grand Canyon that have inhabited this region for thousands of years tell stories of a massive ancient city that was taken out by a cataclysmic flood. The people of this city created huge cavern systems where they stored their knowledge and treasures to preserve their histories. A group of miners looking for ore in the early 1900s found one of these caves and reported finding mummies and hieroglyphs in what looked to be Egyptian artifacts made of gold and copper. But could this really be possible? Could the Egyptians long ago in our ancient past have really made it all the way to America? Civilizations and agriculture in the southwest is said to have begun sometime around 2000 to 1000 BC. Not so coincidentally, during the same time period in Egypt, we have a story of a group fleeing from a regime change, and the historical record shows no trace of this group after they're kicked from power in Egypt, and their mummies were never uncovered. To truly get to the bottom of this Egyptians in the Grand Canyon mystery, we have to understand what was going on in Egypt during this time period of roughly 1700 to 1300 BC. This was what was known as the Hyksos dynasty. They were a group of pirate sea raiders that took over Egypt at this time. Modern historians mostly agree that these were likely the people we know of as the Phoenicians, coming from the cities of Tyre, Sidon, and Byblos, in modern day Lebanon. The Phoenicians were masters of the oceans at this time and controlled most of the Mediterranean. They had colonies in Carthage, Spain, Morocco, even Great Britain. Many even theorized they made it as far as the Americas, and they easily could have in their huge trireme ships. These people kept these lands outside the Pillars of Hercules a secret from the rest of the world, and even spread rumors of sea monsters and huge tempests that would kill anyone who sailed west. They had a monopoly on the sea, and would acquire cheap goods and raw materials from local tribespeople and sell them back to the people around the Mediterranean. They even had an outpost in the Azores Islands which would make a perfect jumping off point to get to the Americas. These Hyksos or Phoenicians in Egypt didn't last long and they were driven out for trying to destroy and change the Egyptian religion and introduce monotheism. And the pharaoh Akhenaten was forced to flee with his people and nobody knows what happened to him. I think it's very possible he could have used his Phoenician connections to bring his people to a new land across the ocean. And the stories of Kincaid and his men give us evidence they might have come all the way to the Grand Canyon. G.E. Kincaid came to the Grand Canyon in 1908 looking for copper ore to mine because the canyon had not become a national park yet and it was thought that loggers were going to come and take over the area. He was traveling down the Colorado River when he spotted a cave in the side of a cliff. He said the cave looked man-made so he ventured inside. He went in 60 feet and saw there were a number of passageways and rooms, so he left and then returned with lights and help from scientists. When they explored the cave they found evidence of ancient inhabitants. He found that these people were smelting metals like copper and possibly platinum which was a technology natives in this region would not have known. Several hundred feet back into this cave, Kincaid said he found an idol image of these people's holy man or god. He equated this statue similar to a Buddha, but not exact, and he said it carried a lotus flower in each hand. A flower that is not only significant Indian culture, but Egyptian as well. In fact, pharaohs were said to smoke blue lotus flowers regularly to enlighten the mind and bring clarity. He then came to a room with angled walls about 35 degrees. On these walls laid rows of mummies perfectly preserved which were found copper artifacts and swords. These mummies, he said, were wrapped in clay and bark fabric. The scientists found them to all be male and determined this room was a sort of warrior's barracks, possibly guarding what lay further back in the cave. Upon exploring more, they found hieroglyphic writing in an unknown language and pictorial writings that King Cade said depicted prehistoric animals. Thousands of artifacts were discovered as well and the men concluded that what they were looking at resembled things found in Egypt or even Tibet. These caves the men came across in 1908 were a small part of an underground network spanning hundreds and possibly even thousands of miles. But the entrance and any other cave entrances in the Grand Canyon have been concreted shut and hidden from the public. There are even certain areas that are off limits like we see in a lot of national parks. But the local tribes still hold this knowledge and many people say we can see the remnants of a once great civilization in the Grand Canyon and around the southwest. Some of these huge rock structures even resemble pyramids that have been taken out by flood erosion. Mainstream scholars say the Grand Canyon was slowly created over millions of years, but those who study catastrophism and cataclysm theory theorize that there could have been a major flooding event in America's history, possibly caused by the melting of the North American glaciers or some kind of impact event. This would explain these ruins we find in the southwest, and why they're so mangled and destroyed they're just considered part of the landscape. These could have been massive structures at one point as large as the pyramids in Egypt and possibly even bigger. It's not that far-fetched when you consider the oldest pyramids in Mexico are larger than the pyramids at Giza, and they were completely buried under feet of mud when they were discovered. This flood myth in the America also spans every tribe and nation here, including the Navajo, Hopi, Mesoamericans, Incans, and much of the other lesser known tribes as well. Just ask them if you ever get the chance, they know their own history.
If this story of the Egyptians coming to America is true, it would explain a lot about the parallels we see in traditions on both sides of the Atlantic. For starters, the building of the pyramids. The Mesoamerican pyramids and the thousands of mounds in North America clearly resemble others found in Egypt. There are even lesser known pyramids in South America that resemble Egyptian culture. The Egyptians or Phoenicians could have possibly been in contact with these areas for thousands of years. These South American pyramids were also the locations where they found the famous elongated skulls at Nazca and Tiwanaku, a feature that is famously present in much of Egyptian art and the Hyksos pharaoh Akhenaten and his wife Nefertiti are both depicted with massive elongated skulls like the ones found at Peru. These sites in Peru also contain mummies and the mummification process was extremely important to these people similar to what we see in Egypt. The parallels are very jarring when you get down to it. Many people say that Egypt was a colonial empire in the ancient world and spanned much of the globe including the Americas. Did you know they even found traces of coca and tobacco in Egyptian mummified pharaohs? There's even rumors of corn being found in Egyptian tombs, which would prove that they contacted people in the Americas, but these claims are disputed. But Egyptians left plenty of evidence of their presence in America in the form of artifacts and local legends, and the timeline seems to match up perfectly. There are a lot of stories around North America of alleged signifiers of an Egyptian voyage. If you know of any local stories I'd love to hear about in the comments, because a lot of these legends contain truth to them and go unrecognized by the mainstream history. But here's a few things I've heard about. There's a story of an old cave in Illinois the locals call Burroughs Cave. The story goes that in 1911 guano miners were excavating this cave when they turned up mummified remains of large humans around 6 to 7 feet with red colored hair just like some of the mummies in Egypt, Peru, and other parts of the US and even into western China. Unfortunately these men didn't care much about archaeology and they damaged many of the artifacts. They were also rumored to have stolen artifacts they found that were made of gold and melted them down for a profit. We do have replicas of these gold artifacts and they look extremely reminiscent of Egyptian iconography. We see a lot of sun worship symbols, which was very specific to the rule of Akhenaten and the Hyksos dynasty in Egypt. Later excavations of the site turned up more artifacts, but not as incredible as the gold said to have been found. Even if this cave isn't Egyptian, it's still extremely interesting and dates back to some of the first inhabitants of this region. Further east in Ohio, a man by the name of H.K. Landis found a brass amulet in 1910, with markings on it similar to Egyptian hieroglyphs. Several years later, a similar gold piece was found with the same symbolism and images also in Ohio. We also find weird connections in naming of certain cities, like Memphis, Tennessee, and there's also a Cairo, Illinois, and a lot of other U.S. cities named after Egyptian cities. There's also the story the Mormons believe about Joseph Smith finding golden tablets in Manchester, New York in 1823. These tablets told him of a breakaway group of Jews voyaging to America in search of a new promised land. And if this story is true, it could be referring to the Hyksos Egyptians who fled the Mediterranean for America. The Phoenicians and Jewish people originate from the same group of Hebrew, who created the 12 tribes of Israel. According to the Bible, the tribes of Zebulon and Asher lived with the remnants of the Canaanite people in the three major cities of the Phoenicians, Sidon, Tyre, and Byblos. These were where the Sea Peoples, the Hyksos dynasty of Egypt, and all the other outposts of the Phoenicians originated, and they had a strong connection to Egypt because this was the land their ancestors escaped from in the book of Exodus. These people practiced a mix of early Hebrew monotheism and Phoenician paganism, which traces roots back to early Sumerian religion. So they could have been practicing either of these religions or some kind of mix like what we see with the Pharaoh Akhenaten dynasty in Egypt. And many people have turned up artifacts in America pointing to a possible sect of Hebrews traveling here during this time. So what does all this mean? It means that in the land we walk, under our houses, buried on our properties, locked away underneath the earth, there could be evidence of an Egyptian or possibly Phoenician Hebrew presence in America. And maybe someday one of you will find proof because you know what to look for. That's all for today. Be sure to check out my video on the Templars in America, because not just one group has made it here before Columbus. Many have gone back and forth, and there is evidence in the archaeological record. This has been Tales of the Old World. Thank you for watching.